Simple Cyber Defense Online Shopping Series, Episode 2, Online Scams. Welcome back to Simple Cyber Defense. In this episode, we are going to be discussing online scams. Uh, with the holiday season approaching, it's very important to keep your guard up from cyber attacks and they will be out there to take your money whenever they can. So, my name is Carl. I'm joined with. Hi, this is Amon. And we're going to dive into the world of online scams. So, let's begin. Well, Carl, uh, before we dive into this, what is an online scam? The way I would define an online scam is basically any thing that's pretending to be legitimate like um for example if they advertise that you'll get product a but instead you get a cheaper inferior product b that would be like a scam or in some cases that, that you won't even get anything at all so it's basically just trickery it's like uh, that makes sense so some so it's kind of like a con artist but you yeah the, he can con you through uh like online messages or mm -hmm. uh some sophisticated looking brand logos and you know in a nice looking email yeah or you know pretending or spoofing you know you know they're pretending to be that from another business that you commonly do business business with and yep. you know like a, a large corporation um uh you know it, it it makes it very difficult for you to to tell whether this is fake or real right correct yeah. and because because scams happen both in real life and happen online mostly online scams will come in a form of an email or maybe an sms message or uh you know dating sites or social yeah. networking sites um things like that some of them can happen like we talked in on a previous episode you know through video chat yeah you know uh so that that can also be a, a form of an online scam um what else what else um i think i think those are those are good to, to look for yeah um so as as a consumer as a, as a as an average joe what what do i what do i look for to to be able to tell you know that this is a scam okay so a lot of times with these scammers what they'll do is they will push the sense of urgency mm -hmm. like if they have a product that they're trying to sell they'll say like oh you only have you know 10 minutes left to get this deal or you know, uh, almost out, almost sold out. So we only have like two products left. Just buy now, buy now. And mm. also, if you look at the pricing, it looks way too good to be true, because a lot of the times they will have like, like a product that could cost a couple hundred dollars, and they'll price it for like twenty bucks. And yeah. that just doesn't seem right, but. There are people who fall for it because they really like the product and it's a legitimate product that they are they want the product it's yes the they want the product yeah. yeah yeah they a lot of times try to work on your you know attack you from your weak point which is your desire mm -hmm. yeah right? and a lot of times it would be like either a popular product like the new playstation 5 or the nintendo switch or some fancy new computer product that's just coming out and okay. they'll draw into that like oh i want that and it's at a really amazing price so i can't you know pass on it but a lot of times it's not what they're advertising hmm. okay so uh, and to kind of dive deeper in, you know, in this in this type of a scam, which you talked about the sense of urgency, um, this is this is the type of a scam where a scammer will ask you for money up front. 
Correct. Say, hey, you know, I have an emergency. Um, I, I need help. You know, I need if, you, if this doesn't happen, you know, this will this such an awful outcome will happen. Please help me out with this. Um, or, you know, kind of like, hey, just like you said, you know, pay for for things that you may want. Uh, and, you know, it seems like too good to be true. Um, another type of scam is a scam that kind of tries to go not for the low hanging fruit, but they try to go a little bit further, which is kind of like, it's like a con artist, right? Somebody mm -hmm. that tries to gain your trust and then get you to re reveal more information about yourself and you know, where you live, where you work, family members, mm -hmm. uh, financial circumstances. And once they have this information, they can use that to steal your identity, right? Or even blackmail you in, in, in giving them some money, right? Yeah. So um, these are kind of like, so we're aware, you know, there are some of them in, you know, some of them will come right out and ask you for money and some of them will try to, you know, go the, the other route, just try to gain your trust, right? Yeah. Um, and then you mentioned, you know, buying stuff online and, and uh, not getting what you expected. Mm -hmm. um, do you have an example of that that you want to share with us? Yeah, actually, I was looking through Facebook one day and I saw this uh, really cool looking computer that was very compact and portable. It's a actual real computer product called the, let me see if I pull it up, the Octical... that up here uh, the, the optical serious a so it's a real product that it's being sold for about eight hundred dollars but this company called ibgmkv.top <laughs> was legitimate. yeah was selling the same product for only 23.85 so that seems like wow that's such a good deal and on their page which looks really legitimate because they stole a lot of the graphics and images from the legitimate site onto their fake page to make it look like they were being legitimate in selling this actual product and <clears throat> I decided knowing that it's a scam just to show everyone what I actually got when I purchased this mini computer, I ended up getting a flexible keyboard, which is probably at most five dollars. Does it work though? It does work, but it is nothing like they advertised. They advertised me to have a mini computer, pocket computer, and they ended up giving me just a flexible portable keyboard hmm. now can somebody take that to the next level and send you a, a keyboard that they have installed some type of a key logger in it yeah they could actually and that's what i was worried about this one so i purposely didn't put it in my main computer and i just put it into a raspberry pi just to verify that it worked and I did some poking around and I couldn't find any key loggers or anything on there, but that is a possibility that they could send you this in hopes that, oh man, oh well, at least I got something and at least I want to use it since I paid for it. And then they plug it in and then all of a sudden all their types got uh, scanned and logged and now their user or the attacker has all their uh, passwords and whatever they typed on it. So it is a possibility. So just be very careful when you do get things like this through the mail to be sure that it's not going to be infected with things that are less desirable. Okay. Um, cool. So we, we know that, you know, there are some online resources where we can learn about scams. Uh, mm -hmm. What are some of those online resources that we can go to and they're actually trustworthy that they won't scam me into yeah. something? 
Yeah. Well, see, so the most of them, there is one resource from the FTC, which is the Federal Trade Commission, and they will give you many resources to not only spot what a scam is, but also how to report people who are giving you the scams. Um, mostly that's for the U.S., but there's also one for our Australia, which does this similar things where they will just alert you of different scams going around and how to protect yourself on that. The links to these sites will be in the show notes, so if you want to go look through them, they'll be there provided for you. Uh, so what are some common scams that you can run into online so that because mm -hmm. if you're aware of what to look for, mm -hmm. you won't fall for it, right? Yeah. To avoid the pitfalls. So what are some of the common scams that we can be on the lookout for? I would say the common one, the most common ones, there are three most common ones. One being the online shopping sites, which give products that are at a huge amount of discounts. Um, the second one I would say would be the tech support hotline. So you go to a website and then you see a little pop-up that says, hey, your computer's infected. Please call Microsoft at this 800 number, da 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 But then when you call it, you're not calling actual Microsoft. You're calling someone from India who is just out there to sell you a fake product to resolve an issue that isn't an issue. And the third one, I would, it would, it's called what's called a romance scam. What they'll go around is they'll pretend to be a person and then get you to have feelings for them through long conversations. And then once you have a set, once you have a sense of connection with them, they'll start asking you for money a little bit at a time. And then eventually you'll end up draining your entire bank account and giving it to them because they were like, Oh, I want to meet you, but I don't have the money for a plane ticket. So can you wire me over X amount of money? And then once you do that, they disappear. Okay. Um, cool. Well, if, if we go to a, one of the resources that we'll have in, you know, in the show notes, um, is the FBI website, right? And if mm -hmm. you, FBI had usually every year they'll update the most common uh, scams and crimes, right? Yeah. Uh, if, if you go to their website uh, and there's scams and safety and there's common scams and safety, I'll see you can filter by year or by month or whatever, but it's continuously updated. And and what they're, they have it broken down into like general categories and we can talk about each of those categories for days, right? Yeah. Uh, so there is, you know, for this year, for example, they have one that's called advanced fee schemes, where it's, hey, you give me $100 and you win $900,000. You know, you usually get those from Nigeria, right? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> there is a business email compromise, and this is where you know relies on the fact that we deal with emails most of the time, especially dealing with other businesses. And this works on gaining the trust of the individual that you're working with. Um, there's also business fraud, which is different than business compromise, because business fraud is a business that's actually working in a dishonest and illegal manner, right? There's another one that's very common with charity or disaster fraud, you know, you know, I'm, I'm, and now that with yeah. the advent of all these websites where you can uh, solicit donations, you know, mm -hmm. without having to be embarrassed about it because you are just a picture or a face or some fake story can be on there. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, counterfeit drugs, you know, you can go and you buy some, some drugs that are actually hazardous for your health. It's not just that they may be, uh, expired, but they're just totally wrong. Not even the drugs that you're looking for. Yeah. Um, uh, credit card fraud. We're all familiar with that. Um, you know, it's an authorized use of your credit card or gaining access to your to your information by you volunteering it through social engineering, uh, elder fraud that we hear about, um, something that's very that's new over the past five years is uh, is uh, election 
yeah, like election so. crimes and security, right? Whether it's an outside actor or no actor at all, but people work on the emotions of other people who can maybe, you know, straddling up a certain party line and, you know, they fall for those. Again, we're, we're social engineering based on your own desires and your own, your own wants. It's very yep. easy to get you to go another step further, another step further. Um, another one is, is, uh, the anti-aging products, you know, you buy the screen yep. for a hundred dollars <laughs> and you look a hundred years younger, yeah, right. um, uh, uh, healthcare fraud. Okay. Uh, because healthcare fraud affects not just patients, but patients and doctors and organizations and, you know, yep. nurses, uh, identity theft. Right? We talked about that before. Identity theft is a form of online fraud. Um, online auctions or internet auctions. Uh, there's, I, I remember some websites, oh, you can buy this TV for $2, you know, yep. well, it doesn't work that way. You, you get $2 from this guy, $2 from this girl, $2 from that guy. At the end, you you know, it's five hundred thousand dollars, and then you send a two hundred dollar TV to one of them. Yeah. Right. Um. It, is that, I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot of you know uh, market manipulations. You know that now they're going mm -hmm. after the people with more money and more intellect, and people that are actually studying, and people that want to be like those, but the, the they're too lazy to actually study and do like security analysis and understand what, uh, you know what where to spend their money and what they're getting for their money mm -hmm. um there's non-delivery of merchandise i mean you you kind of dodge the bullet there you got a two dollar keyboard for 25 dollars. that's not too yeah. bad but you know somebody could just ask you hey do this and buy this i know i buy it and then you don't get anything in the mail yeah right um <clears throat> so the you know, ponzi schemes pyramid schemes ransomware all that stuff uh, reverse mortgage scams. This this became popular, uh, I think, ten years ago, and I yeah. haven't been paying attention to it. But um, then one of the ones that you mentioned is romance scam, right? Mm -hmm. Well, you, you you make someone desperate fall in love with with nothing, and then you start to, you know, get their money or hey, send me this. I need this. I need that. Um, and uh, what is uh this one is called sextortion yeah <laughs> also the, yeah and this one is interesting it's a crime that involves adults coercing kids and teens into sending illicit images online mm -hmm. um you know one 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 of my instructors once said if you don't want your your private photos seen online don't take them, don't take them yeah it's as simple as that if, because i i don't care how much how secure you are it can be a data breach that you have no control over and there goes all your private information so now yep. you're now damage control and damage control takes a long time for you to you know find those photos and and delete them all and yeah. go after them and delete them and all that um and if, if you remember it was uh the, the 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 England cats. The, what's her name? The dude and his wife. Mm -hmm. uh, Princess Kate, or Prince is, that, Kate. is that her name? Yeah, Princess Kate. Yeah, remember she? There was some photos online before they mm -hmm. they got married, and then after they got married, there was this big, huge, you know, internet Punch purge. Yeah. yeah. Now imagine how much how much resources and money these people have, and you can still find those photos online. Yeah. You just okay, gotta so lurk. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, if, if you're that interested, you'll find them. They're not they're not yeah. that difficult to find. Um, so that's you know that's and that that really struck a chord with me. It's like, and this is you know I have I have uh, young kids, and that's what I tell them. You don't take pictures. You don't want anybody to see them. See, yeah, because once it's out there, there's yeah. no control over it. There's no control. Over, not even if it's out there. If it's even on your device. Yeah. Even if it's on your device. So don't even go that route, and it'll you know it'll, it'll save you a lot of headache in the in the future. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Carl, I want to kind of dive into maybe one or two uh, scams if we have the time okay. of that, that involve uh, you know this season that's coming upon us, which is the holiday season, and we're doing a lot of shopping online, and we're doing a lot of uh, receiving a lot of merchandise. Um, what are Let's say what are two 
scams that we commonly for, fall for and how to protect ourselves from mm -hmm. those scams. So with the holiday season, there are two, the two major scams that I'd see would go in the uh, delivery scams, which what happens was the attacker will send you either an email or a text message saying, hey, your package is has tried to be delivered, but we couldn't for some reason. So can you click on this link to verify your address or something like that? And then once you get to that malicious site, then they'll start saying, okay, we could give you this package earlier or to this time if you give us like one or two dollars or whatever and then once you give them the credit card they turn around and sell it to someone else and then you end up with like a ten thousand dollar bill instead of like a one dollar two dollar charge that they said they'll give you um to protect you on this one i would just say the best thing to do is if you're expecting a package do not click any links on any emails or text messages that you receive pretending to be the courier but to actually go to the site that you actually ordered the product from and they will tell you how to track your product and that way the attacker aren't, isn't going to be able to fool you because you're going to the actual source the person who is actually delivering to you and if you're not expecting any package at all then there'd be no reason for you to get a email or any kind of alert saying that your package is delayed or anything like that so you just disregard those emails because it, it will be a scam um, so the second one major one for the holiday season to look out for are basically I would just say the fake storefronts because they're going to be popping up left and right and center everywhere especially with these major big popular products out there and say hey we can give you a deal and instead of spending like six hundred dollars on the product we can give it to you for a hundred or whatever and then you trust them but they end up not giving you what they advertised a lot of times these storefronts will give you like these weird names like the ibgmkv.top and and they're all going to look very generic and <clears throat> and another way you can tell that this is a fake site is the link that they give you will go directly to their product but if you go to their home page on their site you won't be able to find their product on there that they're listing. You'll find a whole bunch of different random products on there, but you'll never be able to find that special deal product that they're advertising through Facebook or wherever that they're advertising for them. So another thing to look out for, I would say, is just if the price is too good to be true, most likely it is. Just stop, think, like, okay why would they be selling a $600 hot product for for any kind of discount <laughs> because this in this holiday season it's all about making money and they're not going to be making money by selling a hot product that everybody wants for less than what everyone else is paying for right yeah all right um so let's say all that I'm, I'm smart enough to to do this i learned enough to protect myself but i still was scammed what do i do so if you do fall for these scams the first thing to remember is don't be ashamed any everyone can be can fall victim to these scams the attackers are coming very are becoming more sophisticated in their attack methods and a lot of them are becoming a lot more believable and so the best thing to do if you have been scammed is to report it right away report it to the ftc and also report it to your credit card and or and or banking 
so that you could possibly get your money back. So the longer you wait to report them, the less likely you'll you'll be able to get your money back. Because a lot of these scammers, what they'll do is they'll hold shipping for like two or three months out in the future <clears throat> so that that way you can't get your money back because these credit card companies have a little small window like 30 days that you can report any of these scams because they figure hey if you waited more than 30 days then that's on you for waiting so long to report it so time is of the essence in this case so report early so that you don't become a victim sometimes you may not be able to get your money back and sometimes you will it all depends on what kind of credit card policies that you have and just earlier you get to it the more likely it is you get your money back so if that's right so, uh, so um there's different ways we can pay a scammer right mm -hmm. you can pay with a credit card it can get you to uh, do a wire transfer either from your bank account or yep. with like Western Union or MoneyGram. Mm -hmm. uh, they can get you to pay with a, a gift card, yep. right? Uh, they can get you to send cash via U.S. mail. I mean, I, yeah, I know we know this is a no-no, but I don't know if you know some somebody would do it out there. It's okay, Just, you know. People <laughs> have done it. There are videos on YouTube of people who got scammed by sending cash to to a, a scammer right and it's very elaborate uh, I'll put in the show notes a link to one of those videos where someone actually tracked down the scammers and actually was able to successfully recover the money for the victim hmm. that's yeah. cool yeah okay. so um, also Crypto, you know, is, yeah. is it now that's this new, right? Whatever it is, whichever form of payment you paid, even though 90% of the time you may not get your money back, but you'll, if there's a chance you can get it back, it's worth the fight, right? Yes, it um, is. So reach out to the service provider, whether it was, you know, a wire transfer, it was your bank, it was your credit card company, it was uh, your, you know, your, 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 your digital coin, a mm -hmm. wallet provider, um, even try to, you know, call the postal inspector if you sent cash via, via, you know, by a letter and see if they can put a trace on that, right? Mm -hmm. There's, there are things that you can do. Um, now, the second thing is, what if the scammer gets my PII, all right? If it's not just cash. You know, they got my name, my address, my phone number. I mean, they're going to ship something to me. They, you know, they got my social profile, etc. Mm -hmm. um, number one is, you know, if, if you give if some, some, some of us can, you know, give up our social security number. You know, again, you get tricked through social engineering to give that up. Um, did you give them your your username and password, right? So if you gave them your your social security number, there's a website called identitytheft.gov where you know it should give you some resources, and we'll put that down in the show notes as well on uh, what the steps that you need to take to monitor your you know monitor your credit, and there's a lot of free resources. Yep. Um, if you give me your password and username, well, we've been trying. You know, I think we're beating a dead horse here. Password managers, password managers, managers. always do that, right? You change your passwords. Change your password. Year. Yeah. Right. Um, now, if if the if you give them access to your computer or your phone or your tablet, whatever, to help you run through, you know, remote desktop assistance and hey, help me with this and that. Now it's time to run your invest in your in your antivirus yes. software and any, any yes. malware software. You know, have those stuff. Or oh, even, yeah. or even just reformat your computer or phone back to factory reset because you don't yeah. know if they put in a trojan horse somewhere in, in exactly. the background that you can't get to yeah. Yeah. yeah um and then the final thing would be you know report it to the ftc right there's yeah. a website called reportfraud.ftc.gov you know a lot of us say oh, what are they going to do well even if just to, to keep numbers and keep statistics 
if we didn't have those reports, we wouldn't have the programs that the federal government is pushing now for cybersecurity and data protection and consumer rights and you know yep. information. And it's in California here, also you have those, you know, the, the state laws that are passing for you know protecting your private data and all that. If people didn't report as we started, you know, this this stuff started to happen, we wouldn't have the budget to do all this stuff. Yeah. Right. And so it's it's kind of like this is this is a type of crime that we have to tackle as a society as a whole. There's mm -hmm. always going to be the bad guys, there's always going to be the good guys, and there's always going to be the people in the middle. Well, it's the majority of us are going to be the people in the middle, and we need to protect ourselves from those bad guys, yeah. right? So we need to band together, not just say, oh, I'm an idiot, I'm not going to tell anyone, yep. just keep it to myself. Just swallow your pride and say, yeah, bye, file for it, and just report yep. Because, you know, like with the example of the the site that I went to to purchase purchase the computer, it's actually been taken down now because it was reported to many people, and then the government stepped in and said, "Okay, this is a scam site," and put pressure on the hosting company to shut down the site so that they can't continue to scam people. So. Is there anything else you want to add in here? That's it. Thank All right. That's it. So, well, this concludes the second episode in the online shopping series. Just look out for the next one where we're going to talk about uh, internet fraud and what you can do to protect yourself. So, see you in the next one. If you like what was in this episode, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing with others. For more information, to suggest a topic, or to donate, head over to simplecyberdefense.com.